was also the, uh, the inquest into his elder brother's death at the Logan Hospital 12, 4 years ago. So Sean was very upset. I'm actually overawed. Uh, he was, like I said, very angry with the way things happening with uh, the inquest and his brother's death. He struck out at uh, furniture from that and he uh, accidentally smacked a tile. The tile slashed an artery in his foot, so he had a, a cut artery. He was bleeding quite heavily. His family called for an ambulance to come, but the ambulance uh, emergency services decided to send his family a large number of police vehicles. Some of them all say there are 12 police vehicles there, others say there were 10 police vehicles there. Whatever the number, a uh, large number of police came. Sean was uh, in urgent need of proper medical assistance. Police just smashed away out of the house, jumped out of Sean, smashed him to the floor. There were at least two coppers on his back. They handcuffed him, and by the time the ambulance got there, they finally took him to the Logan Hospital, but uh, he lost too much blood and he was declared deceased there at the Logan Hospital. So the family uh, then had to go through the, the process that all our families go through when these sorts of events happen. They've got to uh, call to the hospital, they've got to identify their loved one and, uh, and then start to make the arrangements. So this is a fit young man. Uh, his funeral is on, uh, on Thursday after they visit. He's uh, part of the Phil family, so they're Kishlaters and custodians of large area country down the way. And uh, very large number of people at the uh, funeral in Badesa. Beautiful service conducted by Reverend Alex Gator. Large numbers of the family and community spoke about young Sean, even uh, two, little, two little ones. So he's very much beloved by his little nephews and nieces. He was that sort of person. So, he said he wasn't a violent man, he was not a, he's not a you know, hardcore terrorist or anything. There's no reason for the police to do what they did. So the, uh, the elders of the family uh, asked for us to hold off on the city action until the funeral. So they asked for us to then take, take the next step and highlight what has happened and to seek justice. So that's why the notice is out. Uh, and uh, we know we're competing with a, a, a number of uh, community events, sporting events, but it's good to see the people here who are here, back to the little ones here. So we'll uh, declare this open uh, and we acknowledge the, the owners and elders and custodians for the country on which we're gathered. There are four principal uh, tribal nations from, from this large Brisbane area. They uh, on this side of the river. Uh, the Corrible people, which country extends from here down to where the Royal Brisbane Hospital and the uh, exhibition grounds are, across the Bernal wetland and out to the top end of, of Red, Redley. Corrible people. On the south side of the river are Animal, the Yagra, Yagra and Yagra Pool people. Our country extends from the river down to the bay, uh, down the Logan River, across the Redback Plain and out to the, the uh, Chomba Ranges. So four principal tribal groups, we also acknowledge our sister tribes from the surrounding areas, and acknowledge elders and senior people from who have come into Brisbane uh, for, for a number of reasons. We also have a large Torres Strait Islander community. And we have about 45,000 people mark up our Greater Brisbane Indigenous community. So we acknowledge our elders past and present. And we extend our love and support to members of the Alan Jolly tribal community. The uh, tall old people, Sandy, Gabby, all that multiple going through the sorry list. So we now please just have a moment of silence to, to honour and remember young Sean and uh, honour and, and pay respect to all victims of, of police death and custody. Thank you very much.
So the program for today is that uh, we will have speakers here uh, in the next hour or so, and then we'll march down uh, George Street. We have a have a permit, a true permit for this. We'll have a police escort uh, to to protect us to make sure that uh, we'll be okay. So we'll march through to police headquarters in Rana Street. There are things that we want to say down there. Uh, Ian, our comrade, where's Ian? Where's Ian? There's Ian. Ian's our, our community comrade who uh, always turns up with this brilliant PA system. So thanks, Ian. So Ian's going to go before us and he'll have the PA system set up down at the police headquarters. There are things we need to say to, uh, to drive the message home to Queensland problems. Because it appears to be this time of the year, October, November, December, uh, when our people come into heightened, escalated contact with the Queensland Police Service. There are, there are escalated arrest rates, there are escalated uh, imprisonments, and there is corresponding escalation in the numbers of Aboriginal deaths in custody. And, and this is not good enough, because every time we uh, we confront this sort of situation, we see that uh, each Aboriginal death in custody that uh, takes place was so avoidable, so eminently avoidable. If the commons, we, we don't hold the Logan Police responsible for the injuries uh, that caused Sean's death. These injuries occurred before the police got there. We do hold the police responsible the moment they entered the premises and took control of the premises. The moment they handcuffed Sean, they had a duty of care for Sean. A duty of care that should have been exercised to make sure that uh, Sean received the urgent medical attention that he needed and we should have been transported straight to the Logan Hospital facility. We should have received the attention there. There's every indication from people we've spoken to, medical people, that if Sean would receive that medical attention, he would have survived. So this is the focus of, of this campaign. They're asking that the police who are responsible for this response to, uh, to, to Sean's family, they be identified, they be suspended, and they be, they be held liable for the death of Sean. So there is a, a petition that we'll be handing around asking for an urgent, independent investigation that needs to happen. We, we can't trust the Queensland Police Service to conduct their own investigation into this. So that, that's a, a major part of the campaign, to make sure that we have independent police, independent investigation. We've got the uh, CCC down there in the valley. After the Fitzgerald inquiry, we have the CJC, the Crime and Misconduct Commission. We've got, uh, we got uh, Lyle Fogarty here. Lyle and Lyle will talk to us shortly about the, uh, the police murder of, uh, of his young brother, Daniel Yock, November 7th, 1993. The CJC failed the Fogarty and Yock family terribly because, again, it's a clear case of, of where police were directly responsible for the death of an innocent young Aboriginal man. CJC. And that was only placed by the uh, CMC, the Crime and Misconduct Commission. Same horse, different saddle blanket. CMC again has failed visibly on a number of critical incidents involving police and Aboriginal people. Now they've renamed it again to the CCC. So every few months they appear to give it a different name. You have to keep shifting the bloody gold plate. It's not good enough. We need an independent investigatory body that can come straight into the situation. As we saw with the Daniel Yock killing in 1903, as we saw with the killing of Mulroney Dumaji in 2004, you cannot trust coppers to investigate themselves. On Palm Island in 2004, Chris Early, Senior Sergeant Chris Early, bashed Mulroney Dumaji to death. What happened? He informed the council office, two of his best mates, council coppers, flew across on the afternoon flight, Hurley picked him up from the airport, drove him over to his place, he cooked him a steak, they had a cold beer each, 
clearly told them what happened, showed them the watch out. They said, that's okay, all good. They flew back to the mainland. That's appalling. It took three separate inquests. It took massive political action. And our Brisbane mob played a very strong role in that action. But still, senior sergeant just early is down there at the Gold Coast. He's been promoted. So each time, this process has failed our people. Now that we're asking for justice for young Sean, we must keep this uppermost in our minds that we want an independent investigation. These cops have had since October the 2nd to get their stories together. That's not good enough. These cops should have been separated. They should have been interviewed by an independent agency the same day that this happened. And there should have been, there should have been Aboriginal elders involved in this investigation. So a couple of things we need to talk about. We've got people who have come down here from Sherberg. We thank them all for your support. We've got people here from, uh, from Toowoomba. We've got brother Lyle over here from coming away from Bay Desert. So we've got mob from Kyogle, Regina, where you So from all over. People have driven up here. But this is how deeply we feel this loss. So now I'm going to hand over to uh, Uncle Fred Poole here. And he's going to share it. We'd ask people who've got anything to say, please come forward and talk up, okay? And I'd like to see some more young people coming up to talk up too, okay? So, so thank you for being here. And as I said, we'll, we'll have talkers and then we'll march down to the police station. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Sam. When we look, look back, Sam, we look back back to the 60s, long before the 60s, long before we were born. A lot of us here, you know, I go back 200 years when the British came here. The British came here and slaughtered their ancestors. They slaughtered them all over the place here. That's 200 years ago. But they didn't slaughter us all because we're still here. 2015, we're still here. And the police are still doing what they're doing, what their ancestors did to us 200 years ago. And they're doing it now. They hide behind that uniform and that bag. And does that give them the right to walk into Aboriginal and Islander homes and do whatever they want to do? No. Is that justice? No. Is that justice for us? No. When are we going to see justice in this bloody country? You know, things need to change, and it needs to change very, very quickly. Because I'm sick and tired of coming here and raising the issue all the time about our young people dying in custody. You know, we got PLOs. What are their roles out here in this community? What are their roles in the police station? Why aren't they out there in the community? Why aren't they going to these houses before the bloody police go in and storm in and do what they want to do? They keep doing it. The PLOs were supposed to be working with the police at each police station. But apparently it's not happening and it's got to change. Or do we get rid of the PLOs because they're not, they're not worth nothing? You know, why should our money, black death in custody money, go for these PLOs and, they won't, and they're not allowed to do what they're supposed to do. Where's that justice for our people? 
You know, the police powers have got to change. They don't change. We'll see more deaths in custody. So a lot has changed. Nothing has changed. Talk about the crime and misconduct. What a whole lot of crap they are. What a lot of crap. Their mate investigating their mate. What a load of shit. We should have independent, independent people, not coppers investigating coppers. Because it's all a bloody big cover up. The biggest cover up was over in Palm Island. No police officer was charged with anything. No police officer was ever charged for anything. And what are they doing? They're committing murder upon our people and not one bloody copper has been suspended or charged with anything. And I think it's about time that we as black people, we as the First Nations people of this land, of this country, start seeing something because where I haven't seen nothing yet and I'm sick and tired of hearing of our young people being murdered it's got to be stopped and it's got to stop now because we don't stop it. Look at all our young judges running around here. What sort of a life are they going to have? You know, our young people, what sort of a life are they going to have? When we got the police doing what they want to do, run in and bash a black fella, you'll get away with it. Run in and kill him, you'll get away with it. We'll cover it up. You know? Look here, across here, Parliament House, all these politicians. They're another bunch of bungles. They do nothing for us. Nobody's done anything for us. Whatever we want, whatever we do, we're out here on these bloody streets demonstrating. Demonstrating for our rights as First Nations people of this country. The injustice that's been brought upon us for many, many years has never stopped. It's still going on. Yeah, we look at all our jails, all full of our people. You know, he's a jail to answer for locking up our people. There's got to be other ways. There's got to be other avenues put in place to stop locking up our people all the time. You know, we look at all this, but the biggest main picture is the racism we have in this country. Police might say no, there's no racism. But there's racism right through this country. From the top end to the bottom end. When you look across here at Parliament House, you look at all those politicians. I bet half of them are racist towards us, but won't admit it. So what I say is, we need, we need to see some sort of justice. 
too long. This has been happening to our people, to our young nieces, our nephews, our cousins, our brothers. There's nothing we can't do in these streets. When we get back, you know, the police can bash us and get away with it. But the moment we retaliate, who's charged? Yeah, we're charged. We're charged. We're charged. Charge that black mongrel. You know? Um, it, it, getting sick and tired of coming here, putting my point across and how disgusted I am in this Queensland Police Service. They can never do no wrong. They can never do no wrong. Yet they can run into a black mother's home, kick the door down and do whatever they want. And it's about time it's changed and it's not a bloody change. Okay, thank you for being here. Next week we're going to come up and have a talk. Anybody else want to come up and have a... I'd like to say I hope that justice is found and that our voices are heard today. From all of us and all of our people, to these one meet, one, one talk, one mob there and that. And we have a good walk hey, all together and stay strong and be black. Woo. I agree with all the speakers so far. Myself, I'm, a, I'm a pilot, I'm a author. And in Australia, what we have is terrorism. And terrorism is enshrined in this legislation and their laws, right? And also what we have in Australia is that we have solidarity right in Australia with other people internationally about the understanding and about the uh, front line of debt and custody. Because our debt and custody, not ours, but their debt and custody, all around the world has to do with land rights, has to do with uh, health, has to do with people that's living uh, today. Not that we want the dead to be our ancestors dead now by this society to give us justice or to uh, be restful in their death. No, we want our lives to be understanding what justice is, to live their justice and their life in this present day. Death in custody in this country, since I understand, since coming from Sharebed, right, it's an experimental on every other reserve right throughout Australia to uh, dehumanize us and to set things in the future for their profit, right? That's what all these commissioners are about. All the tribunals in this country of the death in custody that somehow the Aboriginal Land Service uh, um, endorse those tribunals and commissions to put through some sort of an investigation into the police. They didn't work because they were set up with white people running it, right? And with uh, coconuts that were running it, right? If, for example, the Royal Commission did the Deaths and Custody of Daniel York by Lou Weibel back then, in 1994. Weibel ran then, right, when they released it. My family said to me, now go out there and you be in that bloody thing, what the Royal Commission into Deaths and Custody done, you frame it up and you chuck it in their building. And I said, but I'm gonna book that. Right, and they said, no, fuck your brain, go out there and frame it up and chuck it on their building to show our people in the future that no debts in custody by commissioners or tribunal in this country are going to give us justice in the future. And that printed material, we blamed it up and we chucked it in that building. What? Uh, to show the future, not just us to the present day then, but the future of what was going to happen with our people, with all 
more gets in custody than robbers like Marinji Dumiji and other brothers and sisters. Badly I killed him too. They mirrored our brother. Right, they mirror all our brothers in this country in the present day. We know that. The brother expressed it before. Fred, Rod, uh, Mr. Curwell, sign it there. Anger is not something that we want to take home with us and put it in our yard, right? Anger is not where we want to infraction it in our brainwash of our children for the future for fucking terrorism. Because we know fucking terrorism from fucking 200 fucking 50 years, right? And also, we know the fucking police, we're for us, right? The, the police there, they serve for us. They're supposed to work for us. When you take away our life in Australia, as a citizen in Australia, you take away our life, you don't deserve your fucking job back. What? Fucking hey. hey. human. I don't want to take terrorism out of me because we know what terrorism is. And just on that point, where it is at, like Paul and Anson, I don't go along with a lot of things she says, right? But the point is that uh, she's calling that to say that there's anti-Islamic lot of shit in Australia. I don't really go along with all that, right? But the point is that if they want to fight war, they're going to fight the war of indigenous people in our backyard. So I'd like to finish off with this poem here, please. It's about uh, up in Megan Moor, Shebeck Brook. They are there, not in them. Have you heard of that brawl up at Megan Town? Have you seen the 2015 and or so the artists cause a fuss and fight? Well, they came and told me before I read a paper, some sister back up a female cop, hey, some cop drag picked on the wrong black man. So they deserve what boomy they got. Hey, now there's the Shaggy Joe saying them blacks who can't hold their grog bang, brought the brawling on, and guess what happened to him to say to the media, I'm a bit ashamed of you being Aboriginal, for they should not have charged a football show game's place. Well, who started it? Hop speaks, drunk started it. Ha 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 ha, hit it, hit it. Black Joe Jackie says all drunken started it, it, it. But Jesus was a drunk. Have you heard of all blacks drunken and having a good time? Blacks play, win or lose, uh, sometimes can't. It, when called boom, nigger, they react fast. Have you heard of steering, teaching police officers uh, who wait for those lads? Talk to the black fellas under the weather, they bang into the paddy wagon or slam. The police don't maintain good relationships. But well, when you hear of a boombi boombi with a Murray, maybe all bad cops and bad blacks should go over to the police for fighting country is next to our, our ground. Thank you. Anyway, when you get any resolution in the future, is to respect our Aboriginal rightness in this country and workers to overcome all these brainwashed politicians because they have a disease, brother, a disease that's instilled in their mind. It's not in us. They can't make us black racist, right? 